Hi, I'm Mark Logan. Welcome to the Photograph Academy. And today we're back out with one of my fashion designers, Angela, Blue Bridal Design. And we're down on the coast, just actually a couple of minutes away from the studio here. And uh, this is really just kind of talking through the whole shoot so you can get some idea. It's a, a pre-season launch. So in other words, what it, we've got is a selection of the dresses that she feels are going to be her best sellers and the ones she wants to highlight for the white gallery. So she's chosen them specific. Uh, she's chosen location as well, great, because obviously the beach is just down the road from us here. Uh, but I suppose the first thing, if you haven't touched on the business film yet, uh, the first thing to uh, mention is that we over-delivered on this film. Okay, we over-delivered on this shoot, guaranteed. Because we had a quote from her, um, so glad you didn't give me what I asked for, you're a genius. And yep, I'll take those compliments any day of the week. As far as tech's concerned, uh, pretty much I'm running with a 7200 lens the whole time, racked out fully, so in other words I'm shooting at the 200, and when you're looking at full length images with distance in, <laughs> in the composition as well, it feels like I'm about a quarter of a mile away to be honest, uh, especially when we kind of give in uh, directions, um, but again I want that compression. It's a 2.8 lens but I'm shooting at 4 so I can get good uh, definition and sharpness, remember this is a commercial shoot, I need to make things sharp and I just don't want kind of the front of the body, I need actually some about a foot or two depth of the actual dress itself to be pin sharp and that's where I'm running around about the F4 with it. Um, if I want to add in some flair at times, uh, I didn't really do that on this shoot but I could if I wanted to, especially when I'm using the backlight, I could remove the lens hood and that would actually allow some of the backlight to hit the glass of the, of the lens. Um, but really as a, a rule of thumb I want to actually crystal pin sharp um, images, so that's why I'd always rec recommend you using that lens hood on the front. So many photographers I see without a lens hood on, and it kind of just, uh, it's, it's ridiculous. And then, they're, or, or they've got a, a, um, a filter on the front to protect the glass. In fact, the lens hood is not designed to protect the filter on the front, it's designed to actually protect the glass itself from the light. So you'll often find if you're using a skylight fil uh, filter the likes of, on the front of the glass, you might get actually a little bit of softening, a little bit of glare from that as well with it. Manual exposure the whole time and things. I need a, a shutter speed that is fast enough for me so even when I'm talking and I'm juggling and I'm running and I'm walking and talking all the time that I'm going to kind of keep things sharp. So a 200 of a second is, is really good. Um, I prefer to be a little bit higher than that if I could but um, as it was 100 ISO, 200 of a second at F4 was pretty much the working aperture for most of the time there was shoot, uh, shooting. Only when I was really kind of uh, working um, out with the beach huts I could actually bump up to about 250 of a second. First shot is basically shooting uh, against the wall um, where we've got the railings. That, that was in fact her main location where she wanted to shoot, but it's not the main location where I wanted to shoot. Why? It's basically it's open light, there's no top shade, there's no direction in other words. So really all I can do is shoot with the sunlight directly onto the subject or backlighting. Uh, and if it was backlighting I was always going to suffer with the location, what was in, in the background in the position we had to be to use it specific and things really. So anyway, um, we're not there for long. In fact, pretty much it's just the test shooting actually going on there. And then you'll soon find that we're going up towards the beach huts and towards the pillars where the majority of the shoot is going to be taking place. Because in fact, that's where I've pretty much convinced her by just showing her one photograph of the difference in the quality. And I explained it to her, look, I can shoot Barry here, but really I want to shoot in Monaco, and Monaco is just up by there. Um, it kind of gave us a, an, an amazing look and feel, uh, because obviously, you know, budgets are tight, and she doesn't have budgets to go to glamorous locations. I only wish. Um, so for me, I've got to shoot wherever Angela says this is where we're going to be shoot, shoot, uh, shooting, and I've got to make the best of it. As far as um, exposure-wise and things really, it kind of goes without saying, I'm always me uh, metering for basically the face of the dress. Um, remember the angle of the light is all, always a, at the angle of reflectancy. So in other words, as it bounces at an angle off the dress, it will always increase the exposure. So that's always going to be a problem for me no matter what. And obviously what I can't do is just meter for that um, uh, backlight hitting off the dress and things really because obviously everything else would be so so dark and we need to actually minimize the amount of work that we're doing in post-production of course because this is a budgeted shoot so by um, exposing for the face or for the torso that's really what I'm metering for uh, during the course of the shoot and that allows me just actually to control in the raw file bringing back a little bit of that highlight around the edge but hardly any work to be done at all with it um, the shoot I thought was originally going to be black and white 
Um, I always shoot raw, obviously, um, so I can do the post-production. Um, but uh, as soon as she saw the, uh, the beach huts and saw all the colours with that, she got in love, in love with it, really. And we found ourselves actually photographing quite a lot, actually, around by the beach huts and so on with it. But uh, again, once more, backlighting, so in other words, turning the, sub the subject where possible back away from the light source, get that lovely separation light as it kind of rims around her. And then uh, obviously kind of just getting her to look off towards the side. Uh, if she's looking at ca uh, camera position, obviously we would tend to actually use a bit of a reflector then to actually make sure the contrast on the face is good. Um, otherwise it's gonna be a lot of work in post-production to actually get to the look and feel. Uh, when I am uh, given the model instruction to do with animation, a little bit of pose, it's more likely than not to either uh, change the dress shape. Um, I've got to look because some of them could be prototypes as well. They're actually in final design. They might have been finished like 12 hours beforehand, but I need to kind of pay attention to that. It might be to do that I want some kind of ruffle un underneath the skirt to actually show a three dimension. Um, but most of the time, to be honest, it's just to make sure that the model is looking at her best. So by turning the body uh, around about a third away from camera position one way or another, we'll obviously thin the client and obviously thin a bride in reality as well with it. So that's the kind of the biggest tip. Um, if I'm showing feet, I need to make sure that the feet are looking elegant and they're bringing extra line in towards the photograph. And even though, as I said, Lowry is a, is a great kind of bride model, um, it's, it's also my uh, control that will make it even a better model. That's the key point with it. A, um, a basic way to explain with the amount of images that I'll shoot. Um, if we go back to the years of film, yeah, I was allowed one roll of film, 12 shots per dress, and three rolls of film on the main dresses. And we used to shoot between about 10 and 12 dresses in every shoot, the main shoot of the year, as it were. Um, whereas on this shoot, obviously, we're just kind of doing what she feels are going to be the best sellers or the relaunch and so on. Um, but I still try and keep to that. I'm still looking for probably 12 to 24 shots. E even with digital, I'm minimizing exactly what we do. Um, there are changes that's happened over, over the years because uh, I will do a lot of detail shots as well when we get to the real shoot um, later on in the year. But we need to make sure that in case uh, she needs some editorial images or she needs some for the web, that I'm, I'm not forgetting about that. So my job role has changed during the course of the, the past, uh, specifically 10 years, I would say, um, when we're actually looking at things in a different way because obviously she's, she used to be paying per roll of film, per, con, uh, per contact sheet. So that was going straight out of her budget before she even bought photographs. Um, so it's important to still keep track of how many shots I'm doing because otherwise... Um, I'm just going to shoot for shooting's sake and it's just going to take more and more time in the post-production. Uh, the key thing to remember is uh, cropping and composition with any shoot. I've got to think, is this a full page ad? Is it a vertical for a banner to go in up in the exhibitions? I knew it was going to be uh, some of the pho photographs, but I also need to do horizontal shots. So she's actually got them good for the web. So it's, it's kind of paying attention to what I'm doing and not just shooting like it's a, a wedding day where I can shoot what I want. No, no, shooting for commercial clients has to be very, very specific. And one of the good things that when I'm in black and white mode on camera, at least you see the contrast element, what is playing its game or playing its role within the photograph. And then it actually does really make a difference uh, when we're actually into the post-production uh, post because I can see the tonality. Uh, I like to try and keep the post-production to an absolute minimum. Obviously, everything's got to go through raw. Uh, client needs to see images on the night of. So the first thing I need to get back is actually do the quick edit. Uh, I'll pretty much edit down to about a half of the shoot. I'll then actually process those files through the raw processor without any alterations at all, okay? She knows that, that's the key thing, is teaching the client, uh, then they're not gonna get any surprises and so on. So then I just knock them down in size to around about 1200, uh, 1200 and uh, I upload them to our online gallery for proofing. But as far as what I'm doing to the files at the proofing stage is concerned, it's, it's hardly anything, uh, just getting rid of any unsharpness through movement, uh, getting rid of images that I just don't like or I think uh, my, com my composition isn't quite right or a bit too tight or a bit too loose or whatever. But I don't want to actually go through each image on that night to actually do the full finish uh, because I need to get that out in a quick turnaround. The other thing would be obviously when the client chooses the images, uh, they'll be selecting a minimum of two shots per dress, a minimum of two shots per dress. 
Um, so I need to make sure I've got that little bit of variety, but it's on those images then, uh, those raw files would be highlighted as five stars, and they would be worked on probably no more than about a minute per image, and they'd be ba basically reprocessed uh, pro uh, through the raw then, of course, when they're finished, because most of the post-production is done in the raw processing. And then pretty much they're actually just sent out to the client uh, via our, web, our website using Smug, uh, Smug Mug, a new gallery. Um, so in fact, the client has different galleries and they'll actually download the finished files fully. So they have a proofing folder and they'll actually have finished files so they can actually go into it. So it's great to be able to share with you uh, kind of real jobs with real clients and kind of what goes into the shoot, even in the most basic ways. Uh, one of the things you know, I think I've touched on at the beginning of the film was about you know, brand and bland, make sure that you're over delivering to the client. You can always use these shoots a bit of a practice for your next shoot as well, but that's at the end or trialing out different locations, but don't take a risk. You don't want to take a risk on a real job with a real client because they might not be back again. And if you enjoyed this kind of little glimpse, why don't you check out some of the other blue fashion shoots that we've done as well, because uh, that will give you a good idea on the consistency and the different locations kind of throughout the years.